Hello, Integrated Math One. Welcome to Lesson 5.2.2a, where we are going to be discussing translations as functions. Now, this is only our first day. We will have a second lesson on this. But before we get started, please, 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 please make sure you've got all your tools. So yes, you've got your workbook in front of you. I presume already opened a page M5-67. But you also need a straight edge, a compass, and we actually will briefly need a calculator today. We won't need it for long, but there is a point where we're going to be very happy to have this at our disposal. So if you've got everything ready to go, let's keep it going. So our learning goals over here on page M5-67, we're going to represent translations on the plane. We're also going to describe translations as functions that take points as inputs and produce translated points as outputs, right? Just like with a regular function. We're now going to describe our translations as functions. And we're going to compare transformations that preserve like distance and angles, which are called isometries, to transformations which are not isometries. And we'll get into that at a later point. So our key terms will be translation and isometry. We've talked about translations before, right? We just slide it over. And we'll get to isometry later on. You have learned how to represent horizontal or vertical translation of a function, right? We had a function on a graph, and we're like, oh, if you subtract two, the whole function goes whoop, down two units. Um, how can you write geometric translations of those figures on the plane as functions then, right? How do you write a square as a function? That's what we're going to play with a little bit today. So if you flip over to page M5-68, if you recall in the last lesson, right at the very beginning, we used translations in the transformation machine, right? We had our transformation machine, we plugged in a triangle, and then it followed the line and slid down, and it gave us a little output triangle. So you're translating, you translated figures and you just followed the straight line or the line segment, right? You just followed it. There's the new one. So we're actually going to kind of break it down and do a, a one point at a time thing. So lines M, N, and T are all parallel lines. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw a translation of each vertex of the triangle. So we're just going to do one vertex at a time along the line the point is located on. So you can see this top point is located, this top vertex is located on this top line M. So we're going to translate each point to the right. Please make sure you translate to the right. We're going to translate each point to the right along the line, a distance equal to AB, and then connect our points to form a triangle. Here's what I'm asking you to do. Do you remember in the last unit when we duplicated line segments? Yeah, I want you to duplicate AB, only I want you to do it here, right? Duplicate AB, we use our compass, right, to measure how long that was. Put the pointy guy here, put the pencil side over here and make your mark. There's your new point. And then you'll do it again for this point and again for this point. So go ahead, hit pause, work this out, and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. All right, are you ready? I hope so. I hope my camera's working. My camera's had some problems today. See, there we are. There we are. It's working. Yay. So I've got mine here ready to go, just like you have on your page. And I said that we needed to use our compass to measure that distance, right? So we put the stabby side on A, and then I'm going to adjust to get my pencil to touch B. So I'm going to put my stabby side on A. I'm going to adjust my pencil so it touches B. And then I'm just going to come over here and put the stabby guy on that point and make a mark. I've mentioned you guys before, make your marks pretty obvious. And there we go. There's the new point. I'm going to do it again. I don't even need to measure again. I already know the measurement. I'm going to put my stabby guy on this vertex. I'm going to make another mark, which I like to make pretty obvious. And there's my other point. And then I'm going to put my stabby guy on the last vertex, and I'm going to measure out that line segment again, make my mark obvious. And there's my other point. And now that I have three points, oops, sorry, I can grab my straight edge, and I'm going to go ahead and connect the dots to make a triangle. Connect the dots 
la 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 connect the dots la 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 isn't it pretty Woo! that looks pretty snazzy doesn't it all right um, of course here's the digital copy of it yeah all right theirs is more colorful it's welcome I would like you to do this again. I want you to do this again on number two. Only notice, I don't have lines now. I have rays. I have ray XM, XN, and XT. And they share a vertex point, right? They all share X. So instead of parallel lines, I've now got a bunch of rays coming out at me. But I want you to do this again. I want you to draw a translation of each vertex of the triangle along the ray the point is located on, just like last time. I want you to translate each point to the right along the ray, a distance equal to AB, and then of course connect all your points to uh, connect your new points to form a triangle. Just like we did last time, go ahead, hit pause, work it out, hit play when you're ready to check your work. All right, I'm gonna bring up my camera again. I'm gonna scooch up, scooch it. There it is. Now, don't worry about points M, N, and T. They're only there to help us name the ray, okay? So don't freak out about points M, N, and T. They really have no point and purpose in this. Now, again, I'm going to measure. I'm going to put the stabby side on A. I'm going to adjust, 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 adjust so that my pencil side touches B. There it is. And then I'm going to take my stabby side and put it on the first one, make a mark. Put my stabby side there, make a mark. And put my stabby side here and make a mark. There we go. So now I have three new points. Ooh. Three new points. And I'm going to connect them. Use my straight edge here to connect them. Make my new triangle. Wow, it like grew that time. <laughs> it grew. It's funky, but effective. All right. All right, all right, all right. Hang on, I'm hitting funky buttons. Make sure I hit the right buttons. There we go. So there's, a, there's the digital version of it. So hopefully you got something look like this. And I hope you noticed that this one was a little different, right? Because this one grew. Like the first one didn't grow. This one like grew and the shape kind of shifted a little bit on it. It's kind of weird. All right. All right. One more, one more, one more. I don't think you even need me to show you, but you know, it's all good. Do it one more time. One more time. So now I have rays XM and XN. They do share a vertex point. I see that line T is parallel to XN. So, I mean, that's good. But again, just draw the translation of each vertex of the triangle along the ray or line that it's located on. You're going to translate each point to the right along that ray or line, and it's going to be a distance equal to AB. Connect your points to form a triangle. So do it all one more time. Hit pause. Work it out. Hit play when you're ready to check your work. All right. You ready to check your work? Because I am. Here we go. So again, I'm going to use my lovely compass. I'm going to make sure the stubby side is on A. I'm going to adjust it so that the pencil side is on B. And I'm like, look at that. Now I'm going to come over and for each point, make a mark. Stabby side, make a mark. Oh, that one got a little big. Stabby side, make another mark. Oh, yeah. So I've got a point. So my new points are here, here, and here. Grab my straight edge. Connect these guys. And whoa, look at this. It's like, I mean, it sort of grew, but also kind of the, the angles like changed a little bit, right? Like the lengths of the sides changed a bit. Like this side was short, longer than that side. But now it looks like those two sides are the same. Ah. I'm not even sure what happened there. That got weird, but it looks cool. Hmm. Can you just answer a couple questions for me? I just actually, I'm just more most interested in the first question. 
Can you compare these diagrams that we just did on questions one, two, and three, and each set of the three lines and the rays that made up our transformation machine, right? We just followed it and we did what it said to do. Which of these three, um, which transformation machine produces a translation of the triangle? Remember, translation was just a shift or a slide, just moved it over. Only one of them does it. So go ahead and hit pause, jot down which one you think does what it's supposed to do for a translation, and make sure you give me a little explanation as to why it's that one and maybe not the others. So hit pause, write it down, hit play to check your work. Um, so I looked at these and I was like, well, number one, just slid it to the right. I didn't twist it or shift it or, or try to make it bigger or smaller or change the lengths of the sides. Nope, nope, kept everything the same, just shifted it to the right. Number two, made it bigger. Like, look, that side's longer now, right? This side got longer. This side got longer. It grew, didn't it? It was like, whoa, it's growing. Um, and then for this last one, it was weird because, like, this side grew and that side grew, but that side didn't grow. And so it actually, like, changed the shape a little bit. Yikes. So I said that the transformation machine in question one produces a translation, right? The image of the triangle is congruent to the original, and it's in the same orientation. We didn't turn it, we didn't twist it, we just slid it over, it's still the same size, it's still the same shape, right? That's important. A translation doesn't change size or shape. So let's go over to page M5-70. Transformations are actually used really frequently in web design and game animation. Um, a lot of you guys play video games. Some of you guys are interested in coding. We do a lot of transformations of those things. We really, really do. And they're often written as functions, right? When you are doing your coding, when you're putting things in, there's certain notation you use, certain function notation, so to speak, that says, hey, here's a function. It says it take this point or distance or angle as inputs and then the functions output a new set of points after applying a transformation. And we do that a lot in coding. Um, so with web designs and game animation and all that kind of stuff. Um, these transformations move objects around on the screen. So you can just start shifting things around. So suppose you are designing a new website banner for a new restaurant. Here we have bow tie. I like Thai food. I like my mango sticky rice. The banner will show three congruent triangles animated from left to right, and then the name will fade in. So I know you can't see it because it's not a video on the screen here, but the idea is that the triangles will be like bing, 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 and then the name bow tie will be like, Whoa, and it would fade in and show up, and it'd look all cool when you logged into the website and all fancy and junk. I'd like you to consider the translation of this first triangle. So we said it's going to slide in, slide in, slide in, and then the name will be like, oh, it will appear. We're going to call this first triangle SQR. So here's what I want you to do to start off with the basics. I want you to label the image, and instead of SQR, we're going to label it S prime, Q prime, R prime. Can you just take a moment and write that down on your paper? All right, so you labeled the new triangle S prime, Q prime, R prime. Yay, that's part B is done. All right, or part A is done, sorry. If we go over to part B, it asks an interesting question. What is the relation, what relationship is there between segment S, S prime and segment R, R prime? And before you answer, let me see if I can help kind of get it in your head. And I'm going to use my pen to kind of help us out here. Line segment S to S prime, that's this line segment right here, right? We start at S, line segment, line segment, line segment, and it goes to S prime, okay? And we want to know what the relationship is between this and our line segment R to R prime. So remember, we name segments by their endpoints. So I'm going to start at R, and the segment goes down, 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 until we get to... R prime. How are those two line segments related? Hit pause, jot down your thoughts, hit play to keep going. 
Um, I don't know about you guys, but I saw the little matching arrows. And I was like, oh, those line segments are parallel. No, oh, they are. Um, you know what? Use your compass now. Grab your compass. Can you do me? Grab your compass real quick and, you know, go, you know, stabby side to pencil side. <laughs> Can you measure the lengths of those segments, S to S prime and R to R prime? Um, what do you notice? Hit pause, write it down, hit play to check your work. So I grabbed my compass and I put the stabby guy on S and I stretched it out and I put the pencil side on S prime. And then I kept it there and I moved it and I put the stabby side on R and I put then I realized that the pencil side was on R prime. I realized that those two line segments are the same length. They're the same length. They're equal to each other. So this was convenient because we can see, like, a, you know, if we're using our pen, again, we can see S to S prime. Like, we can follow it and be like, there it is. And we can see R to R prime. I don't see a line drawn in going from Q to Q prime. But you can either use your compass or make a pretty educated guess. What do you know about the distance Q to Q prime? And what do you know about that line that contains Q to Q prime? Hit pause, jot down your thoughts, hit play to check your work. If you used your compass, I hope you realized that when you went pointy, when you went stabby side to pencil side, stabby side to pencil side, I hope you realized very quickly that Q to Q prime is the same distance as S to S prime and, and R to R prime. It's the same distance. We didn't draw the line in, but the distance is the same. Um, and actually, I also noticed that if I were to draw that line in, it's parallel to the others. Right? Right. So um, this brings up some interesting things. All of these lines were parallel, kind of like the one we picked for the translation in the beginning, right? And all of those distances were equal, right? All of those lengths were the same, kind of like the translation <laughs> machine that we picked in the beginning where we measured with our compass and we made sure we had the same distances. So this is interesting. A translation can actually be measured as a line, as what we call a directed line segment. I mean, it's a line segment. But we have to remember direction matters as well. So triangle MNP was translated to produce triangle M prime N prime P prime. And this triangle was translated a distance equal to the distance between points A to point B. So AB is what we would call the directed line segment that we use to measure this translation. So over on page 71, we have this lovely grid and you can draw on it and you can write on it. I have a question for you and you may have to think back. We did this earlier in the semester. You're going to have to think back a bit. What is the distance from point A to point B? What's that distance? Go ahead, hit pause, see if you can remember how to do this and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. So you may have tried to use distance formula, but there might have been a few problems because maybe you're like, I forgot what distance formula was. Or maybe you noticed there were no coordinates. There's no x and y axis here. So do you remember that distance formula was just based on Pythagorean theorem? So I'm going to be like, OK, well, I'm going to be like, this is how far here. And I'm going to make a little right to come straight across. And I'm like, OK, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So fine, I'm going to say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Or in this case, I'm going to say ab is the square root of seven squared plus six squared. And then I grabbed a calculator. This is why you want a calculator today, guys. Just warning you. Um, so seven squared is 49. Six squared is 36. If I add those together, I get 85 and with the help of my lovely calculator, the square root of 85 is about 9.22 units, roughly, kind of, sort of. So the length of AB, 
remember he loses his hat once we're looking at plugging numbers in, um, is 9.22 units. Can you now, using that same technique, find the distance from M to M prime, find the distance from N to N prime, and the distance from P to P prime, and tell me what you notice. Hit pause, show me a little bit of work, play with this, and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. I'm gonna grab my pen. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and start with M to M prime again. It looks like I had to go down six, yeah, and then over seven. Ha! So if I'm going from M to M prime, I once again have to do seven squared plus six squared, which is exactly what we did before. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do this again. Let's go from N to N prime. So to get there, it looks like I got to go down six units and over seven units. Wait a minute. So I have seven squared plus six squared and I do the square root again. Oh my gosh, it's the same thing as before. I bet you know what's happening, but let's do it one more time. One more time. Let's go from P to P prime. I'm going to go down one, two, three, four, five, six units. And I'm going to go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units. Oh my gosh, it happened again. Seven squared plus six squared. If I do the square root, I get 9.22 units. Again, huh. all the distances are equal, as they should be. If I'm translating this, if I'm moving everybody the same distance, all those distances should be equal. I'm moving them all the same distance. They should be the same. Um, can you draw another directed line segment on the grid which defines the translation of M's triangle MNP to triangle M prime N prime P prime? Um, just draw it. Just like we drew from A to B, maybe you want to draw from here to here or here to here or here to here. It doesn't have to be over here. Go ahead and hit pause. Just draw it. Hit play keep the party going. So I went ahead and I was like, well, the easiest is to go from N to N prime. And I just made a line segment. Boom. There it is. There's another directed line segment. It should be parallel to the original and the same length as the original. But I could put this anywhere. I could put this anywhere on my grid as long as it's parallel to the original, and it's the same length as the original. That's all that matters. Yeah. All right, we've played with this enough. Let's talk about actually turning these things into functions, okay? We know a translation is a slide. We know that's what it is. So how can we write it as a function? Well, if you come over to page M5-72, we can do that for you. A translation is a function t, which takes its input, um, which takes as its input a set of what we call pre-image points. So we haven't done anything to them yet, the originals, and it outputs a set of image points, right? It spits out the new guy. The pre-image points are translated a distance of AB in the direction of AB. For example, a translation of point P, right? So I have a point P that I'm going to translate somewhere. I would write that as T, capital T for translation, sub AB. This is the distance and direction I'm moving it in, okay, of point P. This takes some getting used to. This takes some getting used to. We'll talk in a moment. Or you can often refer to it, and uh, we often also refer to it as P prime. We often refer to the image, the new one, as P prime. Um, just like a function, Every input gets one output, right? All that kind of stuff. You know how this goes. Um, and inputs don't have to be numbers, right? Inputs can be points. Remember when we used to do um, f of x, right? And it would output some number, which we refer to as y. Yeah, we input x and it spits out a y. So if I input p, a translation of this many units, however length, however, whatever length it is, whatever distance it is, and it spits out P prime. 
Now, we'll play with this notation just a second, but I want to make sure we get this other definition in. A translation is an example of an isometry. An isometry is a rigid motion transformation that preserves size and shape. This is important. An isometry is a, any transformation that preserves size and shape, usually a rigid motion transformation, okay? Don't let the shape change, don't let the size change, and it's an isometry. Let's come back to this notation thing for a minute here, though. All right. So a translation function can, be repre uh, can represent the distance and direction of the translation using a line or a line segment, or a parallel line or line segment. So here I have transformation T going distance AB of P. So here you can see I have the original P. Here's AB. So I'm going to translate AB, pardon me, I'm going to translate point P that far over to here to P prime. There's my new point, P prime. I just translated this distance AB because that's what it said. It said AB. Woo. It said AB. So I translated it the distance of AB and I called the new guy P prime. This takes a while to wrap your head around. I have another example here. Let me use another, another color here. Here I have the translation, ooh, only now it's not A to B. Now I'm translating from A to C, point P. So here's point P. A to C means I'm going to translate it over, 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 parallel, parallel. Boop, right there. And we're going to call this one P double prime just because it's the second one I did, so we call it double prime. Takes a bit to wrap your head around. Can you look back um, at that example that we were working on before with the triangles? Can you try to use this new notation to describe the translation that we did earlier with the, with the website banner? You could just pick one point to describe. You don't have to describe the whole triangle. Actually, I do want you to describe the whole triangle. Hit pause. See what you can do with this. Even if you're a little confused, that's okay. Just try it out. If you mess up, we got a pencil, erase it, make it better. Hit pause to try it out, hit play, and I'll keep discussing it with you. All right. I'm going to use a big, it's a translation, right? Triangle SQR became the new guy. And in fact, we don't have everything labeled here. Um, so this was, we called that S prime, Q prime, R prime, right? Cool. So I'm going to translate... And we'll worry about the distance in just a moment. I'm going to translate triangle SQR to become the new triangle S prime, Q prime, R prime. Now, the distance we translated, there's actually three different ways you could write this. We could say the distance is just from S to S prime, right? That's the one of the, the distance that we used. So I could say my transformation is from S to S prime of triangle SQR to give me triangle S prime, Q prime, R prime. So that's one way that you could have written the notation for this. It's not the only way. Because guess what? You also, maybe instead of saying from S to S prime, you could have said, oh, we went from R to R prime, or from Q to Q prime. There are a couple different ways you could have written this. I just defaulted to S because it was on top. It's the easiest. Can you explain how your function represents the translation of all of the points of triangle SQR? Hit pause, jot down any thoughts you have, hit play to keep going. So every point on the entire triangle, did you notice when I did this? Did you notice when I did this? It wasn't just a single point. I put the whole triangle in there because we moved the whole triangle, right? So. Every point on the triangle moved that same distance because whether it was S to S prime, Q to Q prime, R to R prime, they're all the same distance. If you're still a little confused, let's try one more. And yes, you're going to have to jump a few pages. Sorry about that. Flip over to page 76. Let's try just one more of these. I think it'll make you feel a little bit better about this and you'll be able to like feel a little bit better about doing your homework. Okay. So come over here. 
the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is label your little, I guess that's a trapezoid, right? Label your trapezoid, give them, label your points, and then use them to label the points of the new figure, the dashed one, and then see if you can write that translation notate, that translation function notation. Go ahead and hit pause, take a deep breath and work it out, then hit play when you're ready to check your work. So me be me, kind of a boring gal, I just call these A, B, C, and D. Yay! Which means I'm going to call the new guys A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime because I lack originality. So let's do this. I'm going to do a, a transformation. The distance I'm going, notice I went here to here, I'm clearly going from P to Q. So I'm going to go from P to Q, so that's the distance and direction. And what am I translating? Well, I'm tra translating the whole freaking trapezoid, so I'm just going to be like, I'm translating trapezoid A, B, C, D. And the result is the image trapezoid. So the result is trapezoid. I'm running out of space. A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. Sorry, I'm running out of space. And that's it. That's all you have to do to describe the translation. You just wrote a function that describes this translation. You did it. Yay. Um, let me erase my funkiness, and I'm going to show you the pretty one. There you go. That one's typed. It's easier to read. <laughs> So I hope this gives you an idea of what you need to do for your homework. This just takes practice. It's a new notation. I totally understand. And as always, if you've got questions or need help, please come talk to me and let me know. I'm around, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.